Um, okay, so uh, so on this slide, there's this is like an overview of um, it's incomplete overview because I don't know uh, about all the existing uh, open source things that would be to I would have to search the whole internet for that. Um, but it gives some overview of the open source tools for structure from motion. Um, and um, I took it actually partially from a presentation at Phosphor G 2016, but since then there has been some, uh, some new project, projects, so it's updated. Uh, also, I found a good uh, list of papers and, uh, and resources uh, to open source 3D reconstruction uh, algorithms and, and libraries. Um, so that's um, that's actually more comprehensive, but also more low level. So uh, this should uh, just give, should give you a better overview. So um, what's kind of striking here for me is like how you can when when I was researching this, um, you can really see how the structure from motion pipeline is um, is divided into all these different smaller components, which you might not really perceive if you just if you just run, for example, Agisoft, uh, because there are, you know there are these steps, but these are actually completely different algorithms, um, uh, and uh, that's kind of reflected in in the open source tools and the open source community. So a lot of these projects um, are actually uh, just libraries, uh, which uh, often come from uh, from academic environment where some computer science students develop uh, their library for this very small specific part of the whole structure from motion pipeline. Um, so some of these libraries are, uh, for example, these OpenMVG, um, OpenMVS, and these uh, correspond to these different parts of the, uh, of the pipeline. So if we, when we talk about structure from motion, um, we actually talk just about this first part, because the rest of it is not structured from motion. Mm -hmm. um, that's just the rest of the pipeline to get something useful for our application. But uh, in terms of computer science, structure from motion is just this, this part here, which, um, which ends with sparse point reconstruction. Um, so uh, these different libraries uh, really just focus on, for example, the structure from uh, motion. Uh, then we have the uh, dense reconstruction. Um, also, that's called um, multi-view stereo. So that's multi-view stereo alg algorithms. Um, and that's uh, part of the, these different libraries. Uh, OpenSFM is, for example, doing both of them now. But it didn't used to. It actually initially was do doing just the structure from motion. So there is some kind of uh, uh, changes in these li libraries throughout the years. Um, then uh, some of these try to incorporate more and more of the entire pipeline. Uh, and uh, these, these green ones, uh, they have some kind of graphical user interface. So these are, these are just real libraries. You have to actually uh, compile a useful example yourself. Uh, so these are more for developers. Um, so basically, uh, often these uh, these open source projects incorporate one way or the other these libraries. So there is some kind of uh, complicated in interaction. Um, so for example, uh, Open Neural Map, what we will be talking about, is using OpenSFM internally. Um, uh, it used to also use uh, CMVS, CMVS, but they dropped it in, in favor of uh, OpenSFM. So they, um, so for <coughs> example, OpenDrawMap was basically changing the parts of the entire pipeline uh, based on what currently is the best uh, open source solution. Uh, uh, we, we have been trying ColdMap. Um, uh, Another, another one is Micmac. That's an interesting case uh, where this is, it's used a lot in Europe. It's uh, basically 
a French um, software developed at the university basically by one guy. Um, and it's used a lot in Europe, but not actually here, partially because it's in French. Everything is in French. <laughs> Everything is in French. They, they got a little bit better, so now they actually have some English materials. Um, but it's still, uh, it's, it's fairly difficult to, to run it because it's composed of these different like, uh, tools which you have to run in specific configuration. Um, so the, the pipeline is there, but it's just more complicated. It gives you a lot of options, which is good, but it's also bad because you are just confused. And, uh, and the individual tools have very uh, weird names, which really doesn't help to remember uh, what you should be doing. Um, so, um, did you say something else? So uh, uh, what's interesting also, a lot of these tools here, which end in the texturing phase, uh, they, are, um, they are used or they were developed mainly for, uh, I would say mainly in Europe, uh, uh, for documenting uh, these uh, architectural like monuments, old mm -hmm. statues and, uh, and these type of things. So they don't actually uh, need any like uh, georeferencing or creating orthophotos. They basically just need a textured mesh. So that's why they don't go uh, they don't go farther. Um, and so the, so those projects which actually uh, are useful for like uh, our like geospatial case, that's pretty much uh, just MiCMAC and uh, Open Draw Map. Um, yeah, so that's, um, and there's this specific case, uh, this is specifically for, um, for video, processing of uh, video. That's actually done by Kitver. Oh, Kitver, okay. Yeah. So for video? Uh, yeah, so it processing, processes, it's focusing on processes, processing video, not like in Into still Into 3D images. model? Yes. Hmm. But as I said, it ends. As far as I could say, based on the current documenta documentation, uh, it ends pretty much here. So, but then the the company provides also the tools for all of the other stuff. So yeah, yeah, it's, but it's you have part to of build bigger it up. Yeah, ecosystem. part of bigger yeah. system. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so Micmac, I kind of talked about it already. Um, uh, I think the reconstruction, as far as from what I could see, was very good. Um, uh, but as I said, it's not a super active project, and there's, uh, I think, only one developer or you know one or two. So um, it's not, um, I would say, a great example of open source uh, project. Um, but it had uh, there was a recent overview paper actually about uh, about MacMac. So it's definitely alive. Um, uh, it's just a it's mostly used in Europe uh, for some for some reason. Um, so, uh, Open Draw Map. So it provides a full pipeline, uh, and uh, it basically uh, it basically started a couple of years ago because there was not an easy to use pipeline, open source pipeline for uh, for all these from structure from motion to uh, to orthophotos and textured mesh. Um, so, as I said, it all incorporates some of the other open source projects, such as OpenSFM, uh, done by Mapillary. Mapillary is a company, they develop actually kind of street view, open source street view things. Um, then it uses some other uh, open source projects. Um, um, probably you may, you may know PDAL, uh, point, uh, point Data Abstraction Library. Um, Um, and um, it's, um, I think it's a good example of open source uh, project because it kind of uh, brought together the, the community. There is a lot of people who, who want to uh, actually collaborate um, and um, the community is very much alive. Uh, they want to uh, kind of contribute to the other parts of uh, the open source geospatial 
uh, communities such as open aerial map so that people can have like direct when they create those ortho photos they can they can send it to open aerial map which is kind of an open repository of uh, of ortho photos um, and also to open topography um, so the advantage is it's open source project so it can be used commercially um, and then uh, you can get you can get a kind of real-time support on Gitter. Gitter is like a chatting kind of system. Um, and you can see every day there's like people talking about stuff, including the developers. Um, it's easy for batch processing, so you can you can run it on uh, through command line. Um, and um, and I've been kind of watching the project for a couple of years now. So there's there are improvements in and they have a roadmap of things they want to uh, implement and improve. And different people uh, go, uh, basically add their stuff in there. Um, what are the things which are still not really solved there is handling of GCPs, where um, I, could, I could still, I could, they actually got better um, with the doming effect when I was testing it like two years back and now uh, it got much better, but st it's still there. Um, and uh, they they don't have a graphic user interface for the GCP identification, which is kind of, uh, so it, it's kind of painful to do at this moment. But again, they have planned to actually incorporate it. Um, and uh, one of the drawbacks is that they, they don't have a GPU acceleration. so. Um, so still that's still a lot of work to do. That's still a lot of work to do, yeah. Uh, this is just some of the improvements. Like, for example, that was, I think, two years ago. Um, you can see they improved uh, since then the mosaicing um, by incorporating uh, like a newer open source project, which um, library, which can deal with that in a better way. Um, yeah, this was the doming effect. Uh, um, this is an older picture, actually. I think it's a little bit slightly better now, but I just didn't replace it because it was not such a significant um, improvement. Um, and um, and I will okay mention what are we actually going to do in the assignment? So we will run Ubuntu VCL, um, and uh, we will run Open Drone Map on on it with Midpine's sample dataset, uh, and we will be using uh, we will be using Docker. Um, uh, I will explain what Docker is. Um, so we will be running ODM through command line. That's kind of simulating if you would be if you would be uh, running uh, some kind of process on either server where you don't have the um, the graphic uh, interface or HPC where you actually have to run uh, just on using command line. So we will learn a little bit of Linux command line. And um, and then we will run uh, ODM through a web interface. Uh, so there's web ODM, which is a it's a graphical interface, but it's web based. So I think it's kind of interesting um, because it doesn't have a desktop graphical user interface. Um, but we will set up the uh, the web ODM. So what is Docker? Uh, that's that's a very confusing uh, concept. So I will try to, to explain it. Um, basically, uh, Docker, it's a it's fairly new tool, which is gaining a lot of traction um, in, uh, in just, um, let's say, developer community, uh, because it allows you to easily deploy and run application uh, using containers. Um, so container a container allow you to package the application uh, with all its dependencies, but um, but it doesn't include any installation. So basically, when you use a Docker, um, when somebody gives you a Docker image, uh, you don't actually install the software on your computer. But you uh, so you don't mess up your computer with any dependencies of that software. Um, um, also, the advantage is that your application, when you develop application and you deploy it using Docker, um, 
you don't have to worry that it won't run on somebody else's computer because uh, because it's completely isolated. Uh, all the dependencies are in there and um, it doesn't matter uh, what kind of local configuration is on users computers because it doesn't basically interact with it. Um, it is very similar. I think that's the closest concept um, known to you is probably virtual machine. So it's very similar to virtual machine. Basically imagine you would, uh, you would build your software and put it on a virtual machine and you give user a virtual machine. So, so then like it's completely isolated. Um, but the difference uh, between a virtual machine and a Docker is that Docker is much more efficient and takes up less space. Uh, as you might know that virtual machine, it requires all these to allocate all this memory and, and space. Um, Docker is basically isolated, but it's still using some of the resources of the, uh, of the machine, of, of the host uh, machine. So you can run a lot of Docker instances, uh, which you wouldn't be able to do with virtual machine. If it's isolated, can I not save my work on my C drive? Is it isolated from my C drive? Well, it's uh, it's it behaves like a virtual machine. So I mean, it's still saved on your somewhere on your disk, okay. uh, but it's not. You can link a volume. Okay. Um, it's kind of similar in a sense. So you can have your data. Uh, on a volume or somewhere, okay, and so. you create a link to the Docker. But basically, the Docker instance is running its own operating system. Um, um, so it's, it's a solved problem. Then it's, it's not a problem. No, no, no. It's a. I've got a CSV file on my C drive. Yeah, you can, you can, it. you can link it. Yes, okay. um, it's used a lot. Uh, for example, um, example, you are developing a web application. Uh, which can happen uh, to you, uh, and you need uh, you need all these dependencies like Node.js and all these different versions of JavaScript packages, um, and uh, and so you you use Docker and you give this um, this Docker. It can be image. Well, it's kind of compli more complicated, but you can give this image to somebody else, and they can just run it right away on their computer without actually uh, the need, uh, because the traditional way would be uh, you give them the list of software or dependencies they have to install first so that they can run your application. So in this case, you just don't do it. Uh, they just use one command uh, and they run that application and suddenly web application is on and running on somebody else's computer. So it's, it's saving a lot of time for dealing with uh, dependencies. Um, it's, Docker is based on uh, Linux. Uh, there's also Docker for Windows. But basically, we will be running the ODM in inside Linux. Like the host system is Linux, and the um, guest system is, is Linux. And uh, so this is uh, uh, this is web ODM, and uh, uh, you you will see during the assignment, um, and we will deploy web ODM uh, using Docker, and it will be very simple. You just run two commands, and suddenly your web ODM will be. Uh, you can open it from your browser, and you can also open it from a browser of a different computer. So, because it's uh, it's will be hosted on the VCL. Um, so yeah, so we will uh, we can explain this more in the assignment. Yeah. So I think we are done. Um, so we talked about parallel computing, the infrastructure, um, why the licensing uh, is actually kind of linked to uh, to this topic, and uh, hopefully gave you some uh, idea of. Uh, what is the current state of the open source tools uh, for the uh, structure from motion pipeline? Okay, 